The Spoken Token is a proud member of the Pod Studio One Podcast Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome into the big show. I am Larry Neal. Hey, and I am Alex Wallace. And we are the Spoken Token Podcast. Alex, man, good morning. Hey, hey, good morning. Yeah, this is one of those rare times where we're, we are uh, up around the sun. This is um, the earliest we've ever recorded, sir. You know, would you consider like a late night recording an early morning recording? No. No? No. no. Okay. All right. No. Well, hey, I, I'm excited about an early morning <laughs> recording because I'm usually my most uh, energetic and exciting, if that's if you can believe that. Oh, man, um, I don't think we can handle that. I, I might have made a true. mistake. This is true. <laughs> Luckily, we're separated by uh, a great distance. So, um, Unfortunately, the listeners are not separated at all. That's true. They're right next to each other. Oh, goodness. <laughs> They're right next to you. Oh, yes. Le- <laughs> left ear, Larry, right ear. Oh, my. oh man. <laughs> so, sir... How are you doing? You know this what? Fine morning. This fine morning, I am caffeinated. I am excited about the possibilities of the day. I've got Easter coming up. I'm excited about that. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, and so uh, you know, but also I'm a little flummoxed. You like my word there, flummoxed. Mm-hmm. Um, so a, a buddy of mine um, who actually lives. Great word. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, uh, I read. I read occasionally. Um, mm. A buddy of mine um, in <laughs> New York. Uh, is uh, asked me to kind of um, join. Actually, let me say this: he's not necessarily asked me. I've just in, um, I've kind of uh, hinted at it for several years. Like, hey, uh-huh. if you ever have a a D and D opening, you know, just <laughs> feel free to like, you know, do it. And, and I think eventually he's just like, okay, fine, whatever. Let's what, let's get, <laughs> let's throw the guy a bone. Um, so I've I've been in. Okay, listen, I've been invited to play a D uh, in D and D. Sounds like a very serious group. Uh, no, no, they're not. <laughs> well, let me say. Don't embarrass us. I will not. Go, I will don't not. go up there trying to pull on somebody's coat. No, no. Or no, take no. somebody's cape. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time. Just because. Oh, That's a did, private joke between Alex and I. Did, did we ever release that? Or is that just in the no. ether like all the other it's, things that we've done? It's it's not in the ether. It's in the archives. Is it? Oh, bless. Yes. Oh, that was so yes. much fun. You got so uh, upset well. with me. Well, um, well, for some of us. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, so I'm, I'm really excited because actually uh, the, a number of the people in the group are um, actual actors. Uh, and so um, so that's going to be uh, really uh, engaging. Kind of, They kind of remind wow. me of, of, uh, of Ryan, uh, Ryan Howard, um, who we just... Actors. Yes, we just play with. Brilliant. But, so the reason I'm flummoxed, though, is so they're playing D&D 5e and they're like, okay, I need you to build a character, and then uh, get him up to level five. So I'm like, oh, great, this will be super easy. And it's not. You didn't hear what he said, did you? No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah. Well, because what I found was is that I have, in all of my years of role playing, I have only been a player maybe twice. And in every because ah. ev- every time I've wanted to role play, like everyone else is like, okay, well, who's going to DM? And I'm like, I guess I'll do it. Um, we've been, uh, we've been, we've been, uh, the opposite on the opposite ends. Yeah. And I think, so, I, I think I've told my D and D story why I wasn't the yeah. DM <laughs> that has changed. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. yeah. But so, so I'm building a character now as a player and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I, it, it's so, it, it, <laughs> and I, I don't want to say it's convoluted because it's not wizards of the coast has done a really great job of oh, str- come on uh, be honest with yourself. No, well, no, M- my problem is, is that I want a very, um, simplified way of doing it but it's not a simple process Mm -hmm. and so my impatience is coming to uh to blows with the thoughtfulness of character creation you want something like this it masks yeah um so well and but i i love the uh the the depth that 5e presents um and and all of the options um well interestingly it's just the opposite of what you and i have been playing the last couple of years because you know D and D in in terms of complexity, right? Because D and D, of course, is that gold standard for the standard TTRPG, right? And all the stuff we've been playing, you know, from Lancer to out to all of them, you know, were that kind of newer generation where it was more about the narrative, yeah. And the character creation piece wasn't nowhere near as crunchy, right? Absolutely, as what D and D is. So and yeah, so I can I can get that too. That there's a bit of a shock, yeah. There's a bit of a disconnect going between the systems. It's possible, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, there is a difference. Yeah. Well, no, and man, and so, cool. yeah, so I'm running into that, but I'm also, I, I am, uh, as I am learning to be patient, as I'm always in process. Uh, Look and at so. You. 
and I, I mean, I'm in appreciating the depth and the uh, intentionality of all of this, the decisions that you have to make. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 like learning another language at this point because yeah. I'm I'm choosing a uh, basically um, uh, I'm creating a, a sorcerer and and then so therefore there's so many like spells and all of these things that you have to walk through and really understand to kind yeah. of a bit, you know start with your um, sort of my character ar- uh, character archetype and all of this kind of stuff so that's just been that, that's what I've been sort of uh, steeped in in the last couple of days it it cool. it's, it's been frustrating but it's also been rewarding because uh, I'm because I'm, gotcha. ex- I'm excited about the possibility of bringing this character to life and yeah. I'm a- appreciative of the systems in place now the right. one thing I will say is if there are n- un- un- not to my knowledge um, but there are very few um, resources which I thought there would be a-, a wealth of resources that would help you create characters quickly um, and, and there's actually not <laughs> one of the best mm. ones. And we'll actually talk about this uh, later um, just because there's some news surrounding it. But um, one of the best ones is D&D and beyond. But yeah. there is a there to do with the extended expanded content. There's quite a bit of a, a of a payment involved to actually uh, create what you want to do. But as far as I'm concerned, that's the that was has been the easiest thing to help starting and creating a character because it actually walks you through um, right. step by step. But I hit a wall when I wanted to do something that was outside of the core rule book and, right, and I, right. I wasn't willing to pay, you know, the, <laughs> literally right. a paywall. Yeah, for real. Oh, good point. Yeah. I wasn't ready to pay the $30 just to get so that I could yeah. have this one class yeah. feature in my, in my right. thing that I, that right, I decided. Right, right. And you know, and cause we, we dealt with a system like that when we played last summer. A little bit, you know. Remember, we, we were building our characters and importing them back and forth for, for oh for, star uh, was it Starfinder? Starfinder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and I, I mean, and I get it. I'll be honest. It's funny that you mentioned that, and it, this just came up. I don't want to get too far into this, but just as you were speaking on that just now, I was thinking what it dawned on me is that all of those tools have come about, and 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 it's a timely product for the TTRPG market. It's an answer to a need where there are individuals. You know, today um, things are a lot faster paced. Than when D&D was first created and, you know, there's a generation now that, you know, and it's not a, der- a derisive thing. I mean, it's just true. There's a generation now that started with us. I mean, this, this started during my generation when I was a kid where increasingly we want things quicker. You know, they want things quicker, you know, each each generation successively. And I'm not talking about ADHD or anything like that. It's just the way that it is. You know, society is speeding up. And I think what 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 tools like this were created in response to was to answer the need of, hey, there's this old game that I want to play, but it has a huge time requirement and I want to play the game, but I don't want to put that time in. So I need a way to get in here, have a good experience, but I need to be able to start it quicker than taking me 12 hours, you know, on my own, you know, with the books. And so these electronic things or these compendums have come up and I think they're great products. I really do. Like I said, we used the one for Starfinder, but it, I was sitting here wondering, I was like, you know, I wonder why those started, but that's what it, that's what it, really what dawned on me just now that's allowing this faster paced society to interface with a slower paced game mm-hmm. you know D was built to be ponderous like that on purpose that was always part of the process part of the magic was spending you know a whole session you know four eight six eight hours keep creating your characters yeah and yeah people now are like i don't have time for that dude yeah yeah well, we need it, to hit the you know we need to we need to hit the first table we need to be rolling yeah and, and it, so it goes back to like what we've talked about before a lot of players are looking for that easy character creation that video games provide. Uh, yes. And so, you, you, so, you know, and, and I mean, that's... And you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Some of the bigger, some of the better video game RPG creators, people spend hours in those anyway. But, but, there's an instant gratification. I don't mean to brandish a spoon at you. Um, there's, there's, the inst- <laughs> there, there's the instant gratification there, though, of that video feedback. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. They're looking at the it. screen. Yeah. yeah. They're seeing the changes. You know, they're turning the character around. They're changing the character model. So I, I guess in that instance, I can kind of see it. But it's still the same thing. Well, you know, it's and, like and, and, and you it got knows, a hundred hour video game ahead of you. And you spent seven hours creating your character for it. And it, but in that instance, most of the character <laughs> creation is 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 all aesthetic and not necessarily like skill based things. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So which, it's, yeah. yeah. So not even as deep. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's not even as meaningful. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. 
it well, is. Yes. It is. So well, that's why cool. that's why I'm flummoxed. But again, I'm I'm excited about the possibility. Well, uh, cool. Hey, man. I'll check in with you with our. Uh, I think we're we're down to just my grandmother again listening to us. Um, no, and so, no, 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 no. <laughs> maybe my aunts no, too. Um, no, they're so sweet. No, no. Um, you got a few cousins out there too. They, they got a few cousins. Okay. <laughs> so uh, my extended so, family. Uh, while you're doing that, um, um, I got an opportunity to, as a part of work, I am the resident uh, dungeon master uh, right now <laughs> in the I, office. The, the, just the image of you, like, um, true story. Oh, 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 true okay, story. guys. So, like, just kind of like <laughs> it was not that bad. <laughs> Did you come in like a cloak and a hood? And, and I, like, if I'd have had one, I would have. <laughs> But my book, I could actually show you my book, but I don't have it up here. It's downstairs at the table because I'm still tweaking. Um, that that we're working on. Man, I got tabs in that thing and across the top and down the sides. And uh, we, we had to use a makeshift uh, screen because we don't have one for the system we're using. But to say all that to say, that's the reason why I have masks, which is a Powered by the Apocalypse uh, game, um, because it was uh, suggested to me to some by someone in the system with which that we're playing around that, hey, you know, um, this game masks reminds you a lot of it. Now, it's very much masks is very much one of the newer generation that what we were talking about in terms of the way it's built and is designed to be very narrative and very focused around the characters. And I just got it. I haven't gotten a chance to dig through it yet, but I'm super excited about it. But I've actually run not one, but two sessions. Ooh. So I'm a vet now. But no, I just I do want to I'll speak briefly on that. And I guess we got to get on into the show. Um, it's funny, man. Probably, you know, getting getting past the initial anxiety because it's work. It was. It literally was work, and I did not have time to really think about it too much because you know me, my mind will overthink it. And my prep ran right up into the session, and so I didn't have time to prethink it. And so I'm sitting there, um, you know, and I didn't have time to to really go into it because it's like, boom, we're here, let's do this. With the opening salvo, I mean, after I, you know, set it up and you know you do all your stuff and you give them that moment that I've come now to, I'm trying to figure out a corner phrase for the awkwardness of it, you know, that titular moment. You set the scene, you explain everything, and then you're like, go. And then everyone pauses like, uh. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, it's, like pl- it's like playing Zork, and, and you're, you're like, I don't even know what to type <laughs> at this point. That's you, you good. Know. That's really good, yeah. So <laughs> all of you who don't know what that is, literally look it up. We're not explaining it. We are not explaining not it. Not at all, not at all. But um, everyone who's play, everyone our age who is who knows played, it just rolled. Well, just, I know, or, but also that who's played great. an RPG, they great. absolutely <laughs> know that feeling of like, that was great. Yes. which way do I look? Which and way? it's funny, maybe that's where it came from. But um, this system helps, and it, just leading them through it, man, and then watching them just hang on, you know, every little word, and then seeing them, seeing the party uh, pick up stuff that I threw, that I put out there. Like, you know, you put a string out there, right? Yeah, yeah. It's and, all about and carrots. You, and you've got stuff in the string that's fluff. And then you got stuff in the string that's meat. So the times when they pick on to the to the, to the the fluff and you're just dying inside, like, oh, that was the crap. Okay, how do I get them back? How do I get them back? And you're trying to stay cool because they can see you, you know. And then later you throw something out there that's like, well, this doesn't make sense, but I'll make it make sense with the last thing. I'll put a little bit of meat, but they'll never pick it. And then they do. That one little nugget of meat is like, yes, they got back on track. And so just that experience... And so probably 30 minutes in, I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I can see why this is pretty addictive. Because I'll be honest. I have to be honest. I've always wondered just this whole my whole life, basically. Like, man, dudes, people that want to DM are kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. They are missing the adventure. And it is different. It is. They are. You are not going on the same adventure. Well, that's not true. You are going on the same adventure as the party, but it's totally different. It's a totally different situation. It's a totally different situation. So... Man, I just had a blast. So we went in and I explained everything. I got everybody to to going into the right directions. Um, I hit my cues. I had a few moments, a few instances, too many for my taste <laughs> of of furiously flipping through the book, trying to verify a rule or particular. But um, that first moment that came up when somebody talked and kind of said something out of character, kind of half out of character, but it's like something they wanted to do. And I caught it, and it was a good thing. So I'm like, you know what? Uh, roll against so-and-so for that. And he looked like, oh, I can do that? I was like, yeah, 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 roll against so-and-so for that. And he was looking around like, yeah. And then he failed. Ugh. And I was just like, and it was so good, though, because I was doing it. It was it was cool. Had he hit it, it would have put them right, right on track. Mm. But the moment that he failed with it, 
And I'm just like, and now I want to kill you. <laughs> I mean, you know, not not because I'm mad at you, but I just think it would be great if you died now. Yeah. Well, and honestly, I'm for like, me, oh, now I see why DMs want to kill us. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't. I but didn't. But <laughs> as a, as a just as a you know as a DM as a, as many times as I've been, the the one piece of advice that I that I've read or learned is and that is the most um, beneficial for me is always fail forward. You know. Yeah, failure. Yeah. Oh, it, oh, I gave him a clue. Right, but it, that's the thing is like failure yeah. happens just as much as success, and so therefore failure yep. should never be a like a limiting option. It should just be you know part of the experience. So one of I'm the a, cool things, yeah, about the Power by the Apocalypse uh, s- uh, setting, the rule set, uh huh, that what you just said is literally built into the system. Yeah, yeah. Um, how you get XP in that system, and it's across the system. Doesn't matter what what game you're playing. Is by failing. So when you fell on a roll at something, um, you get an XP. And so when you take four, between three and five, again, depending on the system, whatever the author wanted to do with the setting, I should say, um, between three and five, that's what you take to level up. But so like, you know, you're going in, you're doing a move. Hey, I want to fight the guy or whatever. I want to, I want to convince him, whatever it is you want to do. And it's like you roll 2d6 and you fail. You roll a three. You know, you add your thing to it. Oh, I made a five. Oh, you failed. Well, you get nothing. You get an XP. Yeah. You know, and you'll only get, you only get, a lot of them don't even have physical punishment in them. But some of the ones that do, um, you, you may take damage, but you always get that XP. Yeah. So literally what you just said, like, it's so, it's so valid. It's just, it's true, but it's literally built into games that are powered by the apocalypse. You're going to, that's, that's how you get XP. You know, and uh, the, <laughs> it's and, by uh, failing. <laughs> this is the last thing I'm going to say, because we absolutely need to get in the show, but this is, I, oh, I, we need I, in the show yet? No. One of the things that I've been ruminating over the, while I've been building this, Ooh, this character, that's another good word. I, I know. Yes. Yes. Uh, if, for those of you write, uh, writing your new vocabulary words at home, I've said flummoxed and ruminating. There will be a quiz at the end of the, uh, almost, the a, almost a bingo. Yes, absolutely. But the thing I've been thinking about is, um, I would love a system that because uh, you know xp just kind of happens uh and you know and you level up but for me it would be fascinating for a system to have um some type of mechanic where it actually mirrored real life learning you know like because we learn because when you level up you always learn new skills or new spells or, or you know you get better but i'm wondering yeah. like how could you gamify that so, you know, like where, where it's like, you know, oh, I've, um, you know, because I failed at this, I learned one way not to do it. And um, and so therefore I receive this piece of knowledge. And then maybe, you know, then yeah. it, you move to like, oh, well, now because I've learned this, I've learned this or a success teaches me the better way to do this. So now I have. I, I, this, it's just a thought I've had for years, but it, right, it's kind right. of come to the surface. I would love, I would love some... to gamify the experience piece really of role playing so no, that it be- becomes incredibly thematic and not just uh, like a uh, sort of a benefit of the game that is sort of washed completely over. See, look, I mean that's that that is a cue that we need to be done, and that my idea is genius. <laughs> we, we can uh we need to sit down with some power by the apocalypse games what you say i don't think quite exists yet but that's the closest i've seen in in my limited um in my limited exposure to well i'm apocalypse. claiming it so right that's here pretty cool out that's into cool. the universe i am copywriting my idea so if, if one of you uh like super important game designers who always listen to us which there are all of them i mean of course right why would you not uh and you you steal that idea sure. i will be really mad uh, Kinesia, I'm coming for you if I see this in one of your games. <laughs> wow, he would like to destroy you. That is hilarious. That's true. That's true. So he's a he's <laughs> no, a, he's a small man. He's a small I'm man. Kidding. I'm, yeah, so. he's like seventy. So no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, but no, we're going to. Uh, you're right. We better get on into the show. We've got a bit to get to uh, this morning. So why don't we get back to it after the break? Hello, everyone, and welcome in to the Spoken Token Podcast, this time, episode number 109. Join us as Alex and Larry talk role-playing, share some new game-related books they have been reading, and get into news plus some current Kickstarters. They also take first looks at games new to them and just plain new in Bees the Secret Kingdom and I Love Cats Explore and Draw. All this 
plus so much more. So, sit back, relax, warm up that coffee, and turn us up as we join your hosts, Alex Wallace and Larry Neal. And we are back. Mr. Alex, hey man, I'm, you know, with everything that we've got going on, and you said it best last episode that, you know, gaming was definitely, has definitely been a desire, but hadn't been a priority because of our schedule. I am glad that we have had the opportunity to sit down enough with stuff so that we can still get first impressions. <laughs> well, yeah, because, I mean, let's face it, that's what we're doing lately. We, I mean, right, we are right. first impressioning right, so all kinds of things. Yeah, so let's drop some first impressions. You've got one you want to tell us about, and then yeah. I've actually got one, too. What do you got yeah. for us? Well, absolutely. So uh, I, if, if you've been with us any length of time, I am a huge fan of Isle of Cats. Uh, I just received all of my Kickstarter co- uh, content for their second expansion, or their well, their big box expansion, uh, just about a month or two ago, and in that, not only did it come with a, um, a, a, a an organizer for all of this stuff, but it came with a brand new version of the game that's called Isle of Cats: Explore and Draw. So nice. this this is it's designed by Frank West, the the creator of uh, uh, Isle of Cats, and. Um, it has, uh, it's um, basically what it is. It is the flip and write version of Isle of Cats. So, uh, what you have is, um, it has six dry erase uh, ships. So, for those of you familiar with Isle of Cats, the idea is just that you you take uh, cat tokens and you put them on your ships and you uh, try and uh, connect like colors together and all of those kinds of things. Well, um, the the act the physical board game is more of a uh, it's a little bit of a worker placement uh, style puzzle game, uh, but this one is mostly just puzzle. Um, so it, it's it, it feels like Isle of Cats, uh, but how you receive the cats, it, there's still a level of drafting. So you actually deal out. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You deal out um, eight cats, and then you deal out four. Uh, lesson cards and so in the original game those would just all kind of be uh, put and you would draft them out of your hands but each player gets a four by three grid in which um, they uh, they're put d- display and you choose one column in that uh, four by three grid and those are the three cards that you will use to uh, actually draw on the board it comes with um, uh, I think six different colored markers so it, so where the uh, original game you would actually put a token on the board that is in the shape here you actually draw the outline of uh, that shape on your board and then it follows the same rules one of the things that it does that's really unique that I enjoy is it actually has a separate board that has about 25 different um, in-game scoring abilities. So in the original game, you would get car- unique cards that would provide a, an in-game scoring uh, ability for you, and you keep those in front of you. Well, here, when you draft that a row, and it has one of those in-game scores, um, you actually mark it on a dry erase board, uh, the separate one. And it lets you know that you get to score that at the end of the game. So really, Very cool. when, when I first pulled it, I was like, oh, man, this is a lot. This is a little bit cumber- cumbersome. <laughs> but actually, it integrates really, really well. Um, and it's a great form of uh, bookkeeping that makes things pretty easy. Super cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I was – I thought, like – it takes up a lot more table space than I would have liked, but we played five players, and um, at first, the dealing out of every, like, all five players, you know, four by three grid, I thought, oh, man, this is going to take a while. But then by the end of the game, it was just like, you know, even while people were deciding, players who were free were just taking cards, shuffling, making piles, and then handing them out right when they're... And the, the pace of the game was uh, really quick. Um, the scoring is uh, is pretty uh, easy, it, especially easy if you've played the game before because it, it has the same scoring rules. If you, if you don't fill up a room, you yeah. get minus five points. If you don't cover a rat, that's minus one point. But then, you know, it, it, everybody's... I didn't know it was rats in the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I play a, it. yeah, yeah. Uh, but everybody's scoring uh, are, uh, kind of converge and because you're all doing those um, different types of... Um, 
uh, those different types of uh, uh, scoring lessons. So um, that was actually is really is is great. I really enjoyed it because, but I love Isle of Cats. So it's a tetronomial game. You're 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 flipping uh, things kind of like Tetris, um, and it's just an it it's an it's a quicker version of the original game um, that doesn't take as much uh, setup, as, of course, as the as the is the game with actual tokens and such. So, so that's right. uh, Isle of Cats uh, Explore and Draw. It came as part of the Kickstarter, but it's actually uh, at retail now. Um, Very cool. It comes with uh, uh, four packs of six markers, uh, dry erase markers, So, which is great. But you can just make a big pool of them in the center, um, even if you have six players, and so you'll have plenty to draw uh, all the different colors. Um, it's... Uh, it, it's one of the better flipping rights for me, uh, and because we, I really well, they're enjoy getting those. they're getting so good. I think we're in a bit yeah. of a mini renaissance with yeah. rolling right slash flipping right. They've gotten yeah. so good. Well, th- I think the the incorporation of dry erase um, uh, components in a lot of things just, uh, I mean, it just seems easier to me. You know, well, I mean, that's, yeah, and again, that's part of it. Remember yeah. the first, the very first ones were just notepads and pens and pencils. Right, absolutely. But, but like I said, as as the design medium, or should I say, that subgenre has evolved in front of our eyes these last three years, four years. Yeah. And the games have gotten just so good, and and they're doing things like that, whether it's a dry erase or just the mechanics. Uh, I think that's really cool. No, that's super cool. All right, uh, there we go. Isle of Cats, explore and draw. And so the one I'm going to cover is um, a, probably a lighter game, I would imagine. Uh, okay. <laughs> when all is said and done, I mean, it's pretty fun, but it's lighter. And that's uh, Bees, The Secret Kingdom. Um, and, of course, that one is is published by Van Ryder. And I know, I know, but it's the first time I got a chance to play it. And it, it made a huge impression with the sibs. We know my sibs are notoriously finicky. Oh, yes. So, oh, and, man, I can't. I honestly can't believe you haven't played this one yet. No, I haven't it, played it. I know, yeah. But you, well, you owned it, and you. I know we talked about it. You said the boys played it. I just, I never played it. Man, I've, um, it's been in our collection for a while, and it's, I mean, it's a hit. It's been a hit at our house for a while. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool game where you're literally playing bees, and you're producing pollen, um, and or taking cards. I guess it would be honeycomb, but they're uh, cards to give you powers, and you're simply just trying to, to score powers. But during your turn, um, you've got one of two actions you can take. You can either take, uh, get pollen, or you draw a card, and then you can use the card um, to 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 draw pollen, and then everybody else gets to take some pollen also. So if you're taking two red, the bottom everyone else can probably get one red, and vice versa. You get a blue and a, two blues and a purple or whatever, they'll get one typically, except for the four. There's only four colors of pollens. If you play that card, everybody gets to take one of the same color based on the card. So it's funny. In the first two games that we played it, when I got that card, I discarded that one. I didn't play that one. And they knew what it meant. They were like, oh, we get to myself. Oh, no, no, no. That's the one I'm discarding. The one I'm playing is this one. Like, you just taking two red pollen and giving us one? Yes. Why would I give you one color of each pollen? I'm not <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And um, I did it three times in that game. And I will say I did it one time too many. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the last time I did it, I should have I should have pulled it. You know, I should have played it. And then I could have helped myself out. But I ended up missing the card I was going for. But no, they loved it. But it, it's got a little bit of strategy. Um, we started the game the easy game. We didn't put the the win conditions because that's a separate thing. It comes in the pack. You don't have to buy it separate. But there are win conditions that you can put out. And it, the rule book says, hey, you know, when you first start out, don't use these. But those help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody can see them and they're like, oh, okay, I need to work towards this. I need to work towards that. Um, work towards certain sets of cards. But, you know, you're building cards. It's a set collection, um, um, basically. And it's, yeah, it's just a fun little game. It's got the little plastic gems in it. And like I said, we had a blast. We finished it the first time. Um, I won the first game. And then I think that was it. I don't think I won won again after that. I think they got it. They were like, oh, okay, yeah, we got this one. And so since then, two of them have bought a copy. Um, So I don't have to take my copy there anymore because there's two living in the house now. So I'm like, oh, cool. I'll just leave mine at home. But um, my first impression, I mean, it is. It's a light little game. It's got enough depth. Enough depth. Wow, it is early. um, To keep, I think, more seasoned players engaged. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, it's it, it would be a filler. It's going to be considered a filler to more seasoned gamers or on a heavier game day. It just is. But that's the way it's designed. That's not a dig at it. I mean, that's what it's designed to do. 
But in that instance, if you're pulling it out, if you're playing it more casually, if you don't have a lot of time, it's a great little time. I yeah, mean, it, it really honestly, it, it, it on first blush, I always thought, oh, this is a kid kind of, you know. But the more I played <laughs> right. it, I was just like, yeah, no. no, no, no. This this goes right into that filler category, and it's yeah. it's quick, and, and you know, and I mean, it, it yep. can be as cutthroat yep. as you want it to be. Well, like I said, yeah, yeah, with the, like I said, with the strategy, you know, you're sitting there, you're watching everybody's, you know, gems around the table, and you're thinking, okay, I want this particular card that's down there, but you know, is it going to get back to me? It's got to go through three people. And you're looking at their gyms thinking, you know, how can I not help them? You know, how, how can I help myself and not help them? You don't have a choice. They're going to get something. You can't keep it from getting something. But so that's the reason why I put that, that four one down to, uh, three times. Because I'm like, and yeah, I could have used it all three times. But I'm like, I'll just, you know, I'll move slower and I'll bank that between the three of them before it gets back to me, I'll get what else I need. But I'm not giving them all one of each color this time because the board will be clear by the time it gets back. To me. <laughs> yeah. And I want one of the cards that's down there now. So, yeah, no, there's enough strategy there. Um, I definitely enjoyed that one. I thought it was great. Um, I had a really good time with it. And so, again, that was my 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 first impression. Um, it's a light little game. You get a chance to pick it up. Yeah. Um, again, add it to your fillers. This one's got a little leg, little bit of legs, I think, more than well, a fillers. I mean, it is know, one. Bees have very small legs, Larry. They really do. They really it's do. But they're <laughs> tiny but powerful. Tiny but powerful. Uh, but uh, I think this one, this one can probably go a little bit longer, um, unless the theming just just turns you off. If the theming doesn't turn you off, I mean, it's got a little bit more power. So that's my impression. Impression of bees. I really enjoyed it. Bees: The Secret Kingdom actually is what it's called. There's several games called Bees. This one is Bees: The Secret Kingdom. Um, and so I enjoyed that one. So that's it for first impressions this time. Man, we got some other stuff to get into. We'll take a short break, and then we're gonna hop right on into the rest of the show. Yeah. Or should I say, we'll buzz to the rest of the show. No, you won't say that. That's okay. Oh. That's all right. And we're back. Oh, man. I really wish that we... I know. I wish we like we could do that song like... Was it back in the, back in the saddle again? But every time we came back into it... You know, like it's that... You know, old rock song. Okay. All right, moving on. We're back. Yay! So we are going to quickly talk about uh, some new things coming to or on Kickstarter at the moment. Things yes. that um, uh, not necessarily we think you should you know, like go out and get, I mean, or sign up for right away. But well, maybe I mean, just, you know. yeah, just make you interested. You could. Uh, if you wanted them. Um, so I think uh, the, the two things that we have on our list, they're, they're of course, numerous things on Kickstarter at the moment. Uh, numerous. But the, the, the two things we're just going to kind of quickly highlight, um, and I actually may talk you out of one, <laughs> uh, but we wanted to make you aware that they were there. So first, I'm going to kick it off with there is a new Tiny Epic uh, coming out. They just announced it. It's called Tiny Epic Vikings. And I'm going to say uh, I... <sighs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have been, um, they have been hit or miss for me. Um, I have, I've, I've purchased every one since Tiny Epic Zombies. Um, and I have only kept one of them, uh, oh. which was uh, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. I re- oh. Tiny Epic Dinosaurs actually was, it was a really, it's a good little worker placement game that I enjoy. Um, yeah. But uh, Zombies was a, was a, was a, a whiff for me. Um, uh, Mex was a whiff for me. Um, then uh, Tiny Epic Dungeons. Um, it, it's it, it is still in the box. Um, I I um. Which I'm, one is Dungeons? Dungeons is the latest one that they just came out with. So okay, it, it is their it is their dungeon crawler. I don't know uh, you had that one. Yeah, yeah. So before I, you get rid of that one, I want to play that one. Okay, well it's it's still in a box. Haven't opened it. Um, oh, and so yeah, I know, but it's, I, at least I haven't gotten rid of number. it. It's, yeah, it's, days, it's days are bless, numbered. Um, bless, bless now, its heart. <laughs> I will say, bless its heart. I will say, Tiny Epic Vikings might be. I I I I still may give it a try because it's a drafting Don't do game. It, man. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. You're right. You're right. I've talked myself out. My wife is. My wife is looking at me. She's like, nope. Not doing it. I think Don't I think that's it. it. If if you and uh, Cynthia are both saying don't do it, I'm not gonna do it. And here I am complaining about it too. Like they've been such a miss. Um, so yeah. So uh, yeah, I think I, I, I own um, I own Tiny Epic uh, Ga- I own Galaxies. Galaxies, but which I, I love. Yeah. What I'm gonna say, and Tiny Epic Galaxies is truly brilliant. And I, I think adore it. I think what Gamelin has done 
is this tiny epic series is it has started because everybody's hoping for tiny epic galaxies. Uh, and because Tiny Epic Galaxies was such a success, it's so wonderful. Tiny Epic Quest was a big hit too. Um, like as far as like actually being a, a solid game, I own that one too. Yep. Yeah, and then um, but then all the others. Um, again, I like Tiny Epic Dinosaurs quite a bit, uh, but I feel like all the others are just they're they're not as strong, um, you know, and so. Yeah, uh, but so I'm just throwing that out there. The great thing about the Tiny Epic series is that you get so much content for a wonderful price. Yeah. So, uh, like, I mean, even if you go all in, at, I mean, it's still, you get so much stuff for like 45 bucks. A- and and that's even at the all in piece. And I, so I am. Yeah. The so one three. I've got Epic Kingdoms and Quest and Galaxies. Okay. And so that's why I, I it's yeah. for me it's worth mentioning when a new tiny epic comes out because yeah. I don't think I honestly don't believe there is a better gaming value out there than the right. tiny epic series. And right. so for just for that alone, I want to make sure people are aware there's a new one coming out. Um, and y- you know I think y- even a, even a we've talked about the you know sort of that value proposition of like m- you know money to. <laughs> to what the game is. And I know we're on opposite ends of the spectrum on that, Larry, but I, I, I this is one of those that I don't think, um, well, I you mean, know, you know, regardless, you okay. know me for, for somebody who, and I'm talking about myself for somebody who can definitely overcomplicate a lot of decisions and thought processes, um, from which I pretty much do. And just about everything, uh, to a fault when it comes to games. I mean, yeah, I don't, I'm just the opposite. You know, um, if it's something that I want, if it's something that I can afford, then that's the end of the discussion, you know. And in terms of keeping it, if it's something that I enjoy or, you know, something that I want to play, again, that's the end of it. And and I get it, and I get it. And the reason why I'm not interested in going into the whole value for play and, you know, I got to play it this many times, because like I said, I do that in a, a lot of other things in life, and I know what goes down that road. Yeah. And that's, and that's tedium that I don't want in my board games. That's why I don't do Shelf of Shame. It's tedium that I, I'm not here to – make myself feel pressured to play the games that I own or feel bad if I don't play a certain number of games. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's, that's, I'm, that's, yeah, no, I'm good. I got I'm you. Good. I got you. I'm good. I, I, hey, man, I got to get up and go to work. <laughs> I got a car and I got to drive in traffic. I, I, I got a diet. I'm trying to lose weight. I got plenty of stuff to, to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So I'm not, you know, when I'm talking about playing board games, I'm not going through all of that. There you go. Yeah. But anyway, um, the one that I'm covering, it's funny you said when you said you were going to talk us out of one. I said, "Wow, man, why are you hating on my game?" But then I didn't realize it was a tiny epic <laughs> game you were talking about. Uh, <laughs> so the one that I am talking about is going to be Maglev Metro Maps. <laughs> which, yeah, which we both we both love that one, and, and I'm going Oof. back it. And I'm going to tell you now, guys, they're doing six maps, and if you've played Maglev Metro, then you know the brilliance that is Maglev Metro. Um, I got it to the table solo this weekend. It's even such a good game solo. It made me want to play it multiplayer, but it's really good solo. But I'm going to say this. I'm just going to go on and say it. I, I'm, You know what? I'm going to go over there and look at the... I'm going to look at it right quick because I, I got to talk to some people. I got to talk to some people. What are you talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got to talk to some people. Hold on, hold on. I got some people to talk what to. You? Let's see who I'm talking to right quick. All right. We got... Uh, Okay, seven of y'all out there that back for one of the maps. Y'all are making a huge mistake. Just go and get all the maps. <laughs> for just one map. <laughs> yep, yep. So let's see what we got. Okay. That's, it's, it's seven, it looks like it's seven people on because they got all the maps broken down. So it's probably the seven, I don't know how it's seven people on each one of those single maps. Quit wasting time. Quit playing. And go on and get all six maps. <laughs> y'all are wasting everybody's time. And your own money. Get all six maps. Just be done with it. If you don't want the minis, sell them. I get that that kit comes with the minis. Maybe you don't want those minis. That's fine. That's fine. Sell the minis. You don't have to keep them. Sell them. They're meeples with screen printing on them. That's great. But you can sell them. But don't just buy one map. (laughs) That's been not as a friend. Just, you know, gamer to gamer. Gamers don't let gamers make bad purchases. Don't <laughs> don't just buy the one map. Buy all the maps. Buy all six of them. Buy Quit playing. Them Quit playing. <laughs> Quit. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, because get this. 
I mean, it's thirty dollars per map, or you can get all of them for eighty. Why are you? Wait, what? <laughs> Confused. All right. Well, for those of you who don't know, Maglev Metro, the maps. I mean, uh, they are they, they they just change the game in an, in numerous. So they're just like mini expansions. I'm just gonna let Alex keep hijacking my section. Go on, brother. Well, you but but you, but listen. At this point, you are off the rails. Try, That's you, what I'm saying. I'm, you no, are, I'm being serious. I'm gonna let you do it. Yeah, go on. You are browbeating <laughs> the the fire of those seven people. Uh, but yeah, it, it it's got so so like Maglev Metro in itself is such a solid, amazing unique game I, I really wish that it more people talked about it than I mean it's still it's still in that people are, are mentioning it but I don't think it gives as much there's not as much uh, praise and or attention because it's it's so yeah. it's yeah. so good now it is yeah. I mean it's thick it's crunchy um, but as oh, okay. it is it really is it really is because once not. you get once you get into the again it goes back to that what we talk about what you're doing is super simple. Why you're doing it becomes infinitely more complex. Yeah. And that's and you know what the beautiful part about that is? Unless you're playing at a con or unless you've, you know, gone to a game store, which I mean those are good places to play it, particularly with people that you don't know, you're going to be growing uh in your skill set with the group that you're playing with. Yeah. You know, it, so that so so that's and that's the only reason why I said because you're right. I mean, and it's a bit of I know it's kind of thin caveat, but it is a caveat. I mean, yeah, you go and sit down in a con to play it or the game store. Yeah, you may be sitting down across from a master and you're gonna get destroyed. And that's not yeah. gonna be fun. That's true. Right. I get it. But like you and I are playing it, you know, we'll we'll grow supp- supposedly depending on how much we play it. You know, we should grow and be in about the same skill skill level. Well, and, and true, I we, I think one of the things even just is like the little there's little um, rule uh, rule nuances. Uh, that uh, yeah. that completely yeah. affect gameplay that you right. miss. I'm looking on your, forward to the new maps. Yeah, that you miss on the first, uh, you know, go oh. through. Gosh, yeah. Like and it's fa- crazy because the fact that you can't turn your train around until you get to the end of your line, like that's something we missed the two first two or three times we played. But it's, yeah, it's, unless you put a unless you put a person in the right, but it's integral yeah. to the mm-hmm. actual gameplay of the game. But again, Absolutely. the new maps they add, uh, of course, just all you kind know, of stuff. Yeah, and so I mean, like, it's, I mean, you got let's see, I got them right here. We got London and Paris. You got moon base and Mars. Come on, yeah, man, space. Yeah, yeah space. I'm done. It's, in, it's in space. I'm done. I'm done. So that's the uh, one that's got seven seven people buying space. Seven people are buying Mex and monorails, and seventeen actually are buying London and Paris. And so I get, I, out, I, I get I'm it. Calling I'm, out all them people. I mean, I'm well, but I mean, out. I understand if if you've got a certain affinity for a, a particular place, but you don't necessarily want all the other content. Yeah, I get you. I get you. But no, I, yeah, I don't I, want fun. Yeah, I don't want no fun. <laughs> Zero I ain't having fun. Zero fun, sir. What you uh, talking about value? I don't want no value. Get out of here with that value. Take well, my money. Rip so me off. How much time uh, as does Maglev Metro have? It has, sir, as of today's recording, which is the 15th. It has 18 days to go. 18 days. So you've still got the time to look into that if that's something you're interested in. 80 bucks gets you all six maps and 104 new screen printed meeples that the yeah. game doesn't need. Doesn't need excuse yeah. me, but... That's you can cool. replace yeah. you can replace the originals or yeah. add them together. It's yeah. a fantastic pack. And a big box to keep them all. Is there a uh, is there a, um, uh, a a tier for actually getting the game if people don't own it? Yes. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. yeah. And that and even even that's crazy because it's one hundred and twenty bucks. Yeah. Uh, this. I mean, the 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 production value of this game is through the roof. The, yeah, because we pay what seventy for it. I, less than that, I think. I think because the in the acrylic tiles. The no, clear, I think mine was sixty nine. I think when I, yeah, I got I, it like right when it came out. I think. Yeah. I mean, so, but the acrylic tiles, the the clear acrylic tiles, just it's even, fantastic. Yeah. I, I I mean, if you haven't seen pictures of this, please, we cannot describe it well enough because uh, it's so clever uh, how they. We have recre- pictures. Recreated the... Um, on our uh, Instagram. Yes, on our Instagram, but not in mm-hmm. the radio verse that we are in currently now. So, Maglev Metro, Map Packs, look at it. Tiny Epic is not necessarily on Kickstarter yet, but it's heading that way. Uh, and so that is what's new with us for Kickstarter. Larry, let's go ahead and move into a new segment uh, created by yours truly. We call it The Reading Room. And this is where uh, Larry and I talk about uh, board game related books, which actually there are quite a few out there. 
Yeah. And so both uh, Larry and I have uh, kind of um, stumbled upon or engaged with uh, particular books uh, over the last uh, month or so that we want to just... And we su- will be revisiting this one. Yeah, absolutely. We want to suggest yeah. to you for, for different purposes. Um, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, so, Larry, why don't you start with... Uh, uh, I guess it's like a little book club, isn't it? We're having a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's instead of the reading room, it should be the board game book club. Well, it's too uh, late now. We're oh, right. okay. Because the reading room makes me think of the bathroom. So... <laughs> that's way too much information, man. <laughs> that's where I get all of my uh, rule book reading done. So. Yeah, we don't, we don't... Oh, man, I'm not touching none of your rule books. <laughs> All right, so the board game book club it is. Um, and now I want some le- hand sanitizer for leave about to- the last time I touched one of your rule books. Come on, man. <laughs> leave it to me to completely destroy a segment. All right, so uh, <laughs> what 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 have you engaged with as far as uh, books are concerned? So recently, very recently, I was exposed to something that was really cool. I missed it. It was on Kickstarter. Fortunately, now this one is at retail, so you can, you can go and buy a copy. And for those of you out there who are looking to – Understand games better and gaming better, or if you're trying to design games or you're designing games, um, I highly recommend this. Uh, those of you out there who didn't already know about this like I did. And this one is uh, Fail Faster is what it's called. The Playtesting Journal is the uh, name. And of course, we'll have the links to these in the show notes. But what this is, is it's a spiral bound journal. It's what it is. It comes with elastic strip to keep it closed. But it's just chock full of so much good information in terms of, and it lets you track projects within its pages so it is something that can be used up and you may need to you know eventually buy another one but it would totally be worth it but there's plenty of open space in the pages um there is there are some stickers which are which is what i thought was pretty cool and you know totally not necessary larry but loves his like, stickers well i mean you know they're, they're not necessary but they're, they're pretty cool but they are for um their accolades that you can get i didn't even show them to you um i'll show them to you now they're accolades that you can put on the front of the book <laughs> Oh, so As, oh, like rewards, like congratulations! Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. failed the fastest. Yeah, and and again, and that's the premise behind it is like I said, you want to you want to fail faster from a design standpoint with the design so that you can get to the success. I mean, that's the point. Yeah, no, that, that's, not, that's that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not everything, of course, is going to hit, and what this helps you do, particularly, and I can speak to this one specifically, having you know been someone who designed for years before I ever got anywhere near the industry, um, it it will help push you to getting the game that you're designing play tested as quickly as possible, which is really what it needs. I mean, once, once you go from however it is that you do your initial rule setting for me, you know, it's going to be sitting in front of word or word processor for, you know, a couple of hours, maybe and kicking out the idea. You know, once I get from that, I need to be getting up from that and building a prototype. Uh, one, once I'm done and it won't be one setting. It may take me a few days, but all total, maybe two, three, four hours, you know, a word processor putting down what I think, Hey, this is the concept. These are the initial rules. Now what? Well, right. this book helps you with the now what piece, and it walks you through it. Super simple. There's no esoteric, you know, magic words in here that if you haven't already designed 12 games, you're not going to understand. It's This is not that product. You know, this is a product designed uh, for anybody, again, who wants to either understand games and gaming, game design, to say, hey, listen, this is how you get a particular idea, iterate it quickly enough to know whether you've got something. You know, and then you can make that decision yourself of, hey, I'm going to put this down or, hey, I'm going to move forward with it. Um, great advice. Every one of the pages at the bottom has advice about things to do. And uh, I just, this one is super practical. It came up to me at work. Um, I was shown a copy to use for some things that we were doing. And immediately when I got up from that meeting, I went back to my seat in my desk at work in the office and ordered my own copy because uh, that copy wasn't mine. <laughs> that was a copy to say, hey, hey. Hey, you're doing stuff weird here. Use this. Wait, what? <laughs> no, 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 that's really not how it was presented. It was very helpful. It's like, hey, you know, this may be helpful uh, moving forward and some things we're going to be doing. And yeah, I mean, I, we sat there, we finished our meeting. I'm reading through it, flipping through it, barely paying attention. Hope my boss ain't listening because I was barely paying attention to what he was saying at that point because I was like, oh my God, this book is amazing. And as soon as we broke that meeting, I literally went to my computer and ordered myself a copy. <laughs> so that's it. Fell faster. The playtesting journal. Um, it's over on the Game Crafter is where it is for uh, retail purchase. And again, you can just order it now uh, if you didn't do the Kickstarter. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Mr. Alex. All right. So uh, mine is kind of in that same idea. Um, it's how to create your first board game by Aaron Frias. 
so this is actually the sixth edition of this bo- uh, this game uh, this book, um, and uh, honestly, it is um, it's such an easy read, and um, the reason I wanted to put it out there for everyone is that ev- I think um, having everyone has an idea, and uh, when everyone has that moment of like, hey, I might be on to something. Um, the the question is, what do I do next? I really feel like this is a a really, uh, it's a really easy entrance into just kind of that. What do I do next? Um, it's got numerous, um, uh, chapters. Uh, it goes everything from conception to design, to play testing, to publishing. Um, there's chapters on how to uh, go through a tabletop simulator, how to get it out on Kickstarter, how to um, uh, create rapid prototyping, use Excel. Uh, I mean, like just the the amount of information in this book uh, that is useful but not overwhelming. It's uh, it's truly incredible. So um, it's such. It's it's it, it's well, and again, it being in its sixth edition, the the uh, you can obviously tell like this has been successful, and now it's just all right. Let's make it easier for people. It's one of those that like if you ever even are, are interested in what the the gaming industry is like, especially for self publishing, this yeah. is a this is a great uh, intro into that. Or well, even better if you truly are thinking of how do I create my first, like how do I actually take something that I've been toying around in my house, you know, and, and get it to mass market. Um, I think this is a, a wonderful start, um, at least to your edific, uh, your edification ed- education. Um, and, and so I, I it's, it's, I just recommend it. It's, I mean, again, it's, it's an easy read, uh, and it's laid out very intuitively. Um, and uh, with a lot of helpful information, practical, like do this now type of stuff opposed to like, and then there's also some theory in there. Um, and it, it, yeah. So that's uh, how to create your first board game, the sixth edition by Aaron Frias. Um, right. and, uh, I, the, yeah, it's it's uh, it's relatively new. Came out. Uh, uh, I got my copy a couple of about a month or two ago, and gotcha. um, yeah, I think it dropped February. So sweet. So, okay. okay. Yeah. So we were gonna have we were gonna have a commerce link. Well, I still may have a, we're gonna have a Kickstarter link to the Maglev Metro because we don't have a choice. That particular project doesn't have a link yet on on their site. So we will have one Kickstarter link, but we won't have a commerce link. I'm super happy about that. Okay. Cool. Cool. I, I mean, and I was going to point out, and I always will. It's not a bummer or anything. It just is. Um, we pride ourselves on sending you guys to the links about the, as I've said before, and I haven't said it in a while. So that's another reason why I wanted to say it. When we do links, we want to try to send you to the information about the games, so whether it's BGG or the publisher's site. Um, and we'll try to stay away from sending you to, uh, you know, commerce links because we're not affiliated with anybody and we're not trying to, I don't want you to be inundated with, oh, buy this. We, we want to get you to the game. So cool. Well, sweet. Well, cool, cool, cool. Well, what we will do then um, with that. Having been said, then we will move on to the next segment. And we're back. Welcome in, everybody. We want to talk about what's new. <laughs> Hey man, that's my first long distance. What's news? Did it just for you, buddy. You're welcome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so what we do here, of course, we're going to just dis- discuss. We want to put in some relevant news um, and either new things to us also uh, in the board gaming world. So it's not comprehensive. We're not trying to be the nine o'clock, five o'clock, two o'clock news, but we do want to talk about a few. If things. you're watching the news at two o'clock, you are either in the doctor's office or you are playing hooky from school or work. So. I ain't got no comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Mr. Alex, uh, we're going to get started with the Viticulture World? Uh, yes. So, Stonemeyer has just uh, announced that they uh, have a supplemental expansion for one of my favorite games of all time, Viticulture. It is called Viticulture World. This is a co-op expansion. Uh, I, um, I'm just, I'm excited because I love all things viticulture and now to be able to, uh, to play, uh, in a, in an instance where I get to, um, play with people and not against people 
Always, always a good time. Always a good time. That way my wife can't keep beating me, um, uh, you know, like she does. She, you know, I always beat her the first game and she's like, okay, okay. And then every, sounds pretty standard. every time after that, she's like, I got you. I'm going to nail you yeah. to a wall. I, I mean, I she love you, much honey. Does. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah, so uh, Viticulture World from uh, Stonemeyer. Uh, this one is. I've received some of those nails myself. So yes. <laughs> this one is not designed by Stagmeyer, um, but it is. Um, it's actually two designers um, at the moment. It is. Um, uh, it seems to. I think they're gonna uh, pre-orders are gonna go up um, early June, um, and then directly on Stonemeyer site. Yes, and then they will ship uh, mid June. Um, nice. So uh, take a look there. Um, typically, uh, Stonemeyer has a, an interesting um, way that they do things um, for their uh, um, their pre-orders and stuff. And so you may have to go through a little hoops. I think uh, it's called like a Stonemeyer Champion or something. I remember back in my days when I um, that's their pre-ordered uh, uh, order. Yeah, that's their order thing. Yeah, yeah. pre-ordered uh, Red, Club. Red Rising. Yeah. So uh, just be aware of that. But that yeah. So that's. Uh, that is a viticulture world. Uh, and next piece of news um, is uh, kind of going back to my um, my D and D uh, introduction, you know, character building stuff. Uh, there, um, what has kind of become the gold standard of online D and D resources is uh, a site called uh, D and D Beyond. Um, I always uh, assumed that it was actually just a a, a an extension of Wizards of the Coast, and I thought it was uh, under their umbrella. But on, um, as of this week, I was wrong uh, because uh, it was actually powered by a site called Fandom, and yes. um, and so Hasbro has actually purchased D and uh, D Beyond um, for a large sum of money. And they are now incorporating that over the next year into their uh, full operations within Wizards of the Coast. So it oh. will. Uh, so the D and D Beyond website will now be. Uh, they're going to keep the same staff that's been running it, um, right. but they're going to actually add some in-house um, uh, yeah. you know, assets. And, and let me to correct it. what I just. Let me correct what I just threw out there. They are not purchasing fandom. Correct. They are just right. They're just D and D Beyond. They're just purchasing the the the, new, the tool set. Right. From exactly. Fandom. So uh, so D and D and Beyond um, provides uh, a lot of uh, digital assets for dungeon masters for character creation and all of those kinds of things. And and now it will be supported by Wizards of the Coast specifically. Um, so that's uh, you know for those of you who are um, uh, D and D five E fans, this is um, I think this is a positive mood move. Uh, you know. So, or at least the hope. So, and I've got two more little bitty, oh, little bitty you got tidbits some tidbits? of news. Let's hear your. Yes, one of one of them I shot down in the pregame, but it is worth saying. All right, let's hear it. Is uh, the DC uh, Comics deck building game celebrates the 10th anniversary? It's coming to Kickstarter. Uh, yeah, I was real sad that you didn't so, you didn't let me say that, and now you took it. But uh, I mean, I own, I mean, I own the I own the game. It's not that I don't like it. I didn't I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But what, what it is was that and it, it is my fault I wasn't trying to be nefarious I didn't realize it was a 10th anniversary yeah I just it's a big I mean like this is a big I just thought, release. They were, I thought they were putting everything yeah together in a new box no, no, this is a big release yeah 10th anniversary is a big deal yeah. so that's coming up and that's going to be on Kickstarter if you like that game and it's worth playing Crisis makes it for solo oh, Crisis at, you know what no not period. even Crisis Crisis period yeah, Crisis period yeah, it, yeah, Crisis makes it worth playing yeah. I think yeah absolutely um that engine I think is fine the engine that they built but in the D, in, in the in the DC comics world it was a little odd. Um, I grew up reading comics. I was more of a Marvel guy than a DC guy, but I did read both. Um, I don't consider myself a purist so much that, you know, the fact that Batman was throwing the Joker at Robin bugged me, but it didn't make sense thematically. It was kind of stupid. And Crisis fixed that. And Crisis, I think, made it, took took the Cerberus engine to a different level. So definitely that's coming well, up. And also so watch out for that. For, the, for those of you who have played like the new Transformers game or the new Power Rangers deck building game, uh, or even, um, you know, like uh, there's all kinds of like, there was a Street Fighter version. There was a uh, yeah, Lord of the Matt, Rings. Matt Hyra did do, yeah, yeah. yeah Matt Hyra did do the design. So, They're different enough. Though. Right. But what I'm saying is, is like uh, this, yeah. this game is the precursor to all of them. Oh, actually, no. Right. Lord of the Rings was first and then DC came uh, very closely yeah. after, but uh, yeah. this is yeah. Matt was the Matt is the author, one of the main authors of the Cerberus Engine. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, when he was at Cryptozoic, he is now over at Renegade. Yeah. But I'm just right. Uh, it, it is an evolution. You're correct. Yeah, yeah. but this is it, if you've not experienced this and you are even the slightest bit um, interested in the DC universe, I think this is the best DC property uh, board game property there is. 
um, outside outside of like you know hero clicks or um, you know uh, the the um, uh, what's the the dice rolling game um, uh, with the the, the blister packs and stuff that's based on couriers. Why am I forgetting that? Um, oh, dice masters. Dice masters. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, they don't. That they don't belong in this discussion. I, well, I'm just saying. It's. I mean, okay, whatever. No, we, we, no, he was talking about best DC board game. No, right? right. I'm saying, yeah, it's not a board game. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah, that, that don't but again, uh, it's a. You said best. Oh, just, and they don't belong. In let this let it go, Larry. Let it go. I own way more dice masters than you do. I, you're correct because I don't own any more at all. Um, but I, right. I did enjoy the system. But I'm just saying that DC Deck Builder, for as as a board gamer, not necessarily as a, a collectible card engine type deal, it's, as it's, a board it's game, the number one it is property. the best DC DC property. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, no, I, no. It's, you know what's funny? I was just having this conversation the other day with with some friends of mine. We were talking. I was, I was going through the Marvel and DC. I was going through the Marvel stuff, mm -hmm. and, and one of them grew up as my childhood friends. One of them was was always a guy who was always on the DC side. Mm -hmm. And of course, that was his question. He's like, "What about DC?" I was like. Oh, oh! There's deck builder. Yeah, yeah. There's the deck builder. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, of course. I mean, you, we've got we've got Bat, uh, Go, uh, Gotham City Chronicles. I mean, but that's still, just Batman. Yeah, that's just Batman. No, but as far as the world is concerned, yeah. all right. So yeah. that's I absolutely look at look into that, guys. I mean, we you if you've I for, I think those that small handful of people who've been with us from the beginning know how much we adore DC deck builder. Um, it's a whole big. Backyard full of people. What you talking? Yeah, about? all six of them. So, uh, oh man, it's more than that. <laughs> it's over a hundred. Okay, so all right. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. I, I, I could, wait, listen. I couldn't know that. We, uh, there's no, there's way. no way. I and we didn't even have a hundred people listening to to us since the beginning. <laughs> Well, I mean, no, no show would that doesn't already have star power attached That's to true. it. It just had us two goobers, yeah. so there's no and way. And we're, we're gonna, still, there's no, we're still, there's goobers. no way we were going to come out of the gate swinging at a hundred folks. That's true. That's true. But uh, my other piece of news is. Totally gratuitous, but it's board game related. From the makers of my beloved, which we haven't played yet, and I'm so hyped about, the Digimon TCG, which I just absolutely adore. I have been just inhaling it lately. First of all, I will say this. It's two, two it's a twofer. Uh -oh. First of all, Digimon's Digimon's gaining traction. Okay. I think it's probably taking hold. Oh. And so it's it's gonna be possibly, if they don't make any missteps, and it doesn't look like they're going to, the next one up. The next, it's going to ascend to that next level. Okay. So we're talking Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, really. You think it, you it. think it's going to be up there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's as of now it is. Now whether or not that's a flash in a pan, you know what I mean? Because it's new remains to be seen. But I think they've made they've made strides in the engine. First of all, the quick way the game plays. And I don't want to go this deep into it, but I'll give it a little bit. The quick way the game plays helps, and then they're supporting the tournament stuff. But the things that they're doing with the cards. First of all, the way they look, the way they're designing them, the content of boxes, they're listening to the community. And so there's a certain number of rares. And there's a certain number of secret rares. If you buy a box, you're guaranteed a certain number. You won't know what they are, obviously. But they're doing all the stuff that the community wants. And then the price, they're keeping the price. You know, a box is 60 bucks, 70 bucks. New. Yeah, and that's 24 packs. Um, all right, so that's the first is that's the first bit of news. What's your what's the, the same company, because that's Bandai. What's the Ufer? The oofer is that they are dropping a Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm um, not a Yu-Gi-Oh! game. I'm sorry. A One Piece. Oh, okay. They're dropping a One Piece game. And so it's got tons of hype because, of course, of what they're doing with Digimon. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, that's, we, a, that's a show I never followed. So I, I'm not... Me either. Yeah. Me either. I haven't either. I mean, I you know, I know about it. I, I've seen an episode or two, but it, it didn't grab me. But I, I can't deny the following. But for me, it's been more about kind of what I was just talking about. You know, when watching them, you know, you and I, I've still got four cases downstairs for four boxes that we haven't opened yet that I'm hoping that trust me it's getting harder and harder not to open them but I mean that you and I are going to play with my starters and then we're going to open them and we're going to do that we'll record it it probably won't be live on the show but we're going to record it so we can play it so I'm going to hold those I just like what they're doing like I said in terms of looking at that market again magic and Pokemon and they haven't blinked they're like okay well let me roll my sleeves up I can do it so I'm super excited I'm super excited for what may come with that. So that was it for my extra little news. Excellent. Well, cool. Well, are you ready? Can I say it? No, man. We got another segment. What you talking nah, about? Nah. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let me say it. Wow. Oh, you stole my wow. <laughs> uh. Oh, new shirt. Oh, you, you stole, stole my, my wow. wow. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, so many goodness. implications. All right. So, and we're back. Uh, yeah, so wow. <laughs> what a show, man. Oh, I love talking board games with you. Oh, I really man. do. I really do. So I wish I could say last night was like Christmas. Getting up, thinking about, but it was so early that it wasn't like Christmas because I'm not five. Yeah, it doesn't. I was kind of sad, actually. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but it, I mean, you and your- Being uh, excited for waking up to talk about- Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's true. I was. I was. I was excited. So, well, I this wasn't. has been <laughs> this has been a, a good- I mean, I was, but I was tired. A good board game morning. We appreciate you, as always, listening to us. Uh, hopefully, we've helped you- um, Find some things to sort of search, uh, search out on your own, uh, just so that you can enjoy this hobby as much as we do. So, for the Spoken Token, I am Alex Wallace saying keep playing. And this is Larry Neal saying keep communicating. This has been the Spoken Token Podcast. If you would like to interact with us, please find us at Facebook, at The Spoken Token, on Instagram, at The Spoken Token Podcast. Our Twitter account is at The Spoken Token. Email is The Spoken Token Podcast at gmail.com. And our BGG guild number is 2656. listening to a pod studio one podcast network podcast find more great podcasts at www.podstudio1.com